This is the Balanced Advisor Podcast with Dr. Travis Perry, helping financial advisors like you achieve balance in their lives. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Balanced Advisor Podcast. I'm your host, Travis Perry. And today I have with us in the studio, Katia Zhang. Katia is an entrepreneur at heart and very passionate on coaching financial professionals and business owners with meaningful virtual relationship building strategies that matter. She believes in connecting with people at the human level using a high tech and high touch approach. In her free time, she likes to host memorable and engaging webinars. Katia, thanks for being here on the show. And can we call you Kat? Is that all right? That is perfectly fine. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Travis. Absolutely. Now, you're, you've been with Secura uh, Consultants, and we'll get to talk to you about that in a minute. But tell us, how did you get into this industry? Why financial services? Why you know this, this uh, environment? Tell us a little bit about your journey. So I would say I got into this industry by accident. My passion really right out of college um, back in 2006 and seven was to really work with entrepreneurs. So because I'm an entrepreneur myself and I really value building relationships with other business owners and kind of being an extension of support of their team. So I, when I left college, you know, I've, started out in the career. My first job was to be an executive assistant to several executives in the corporate world. And then I branched off and continued being an executive assistant, um, but served virtually other business owners around the nation. And then I kind of found my way a few years out uh, here in Minnesota, where I found my current boss, George Davidson. Um, And he is the founder of Secura Consultants. Um, one of our, you know, the leading disability insurance brokerages in the nation. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I got into the financial services industry really by accident um, with my passion um, to connect to other entrepreneurs. And then really, I think what interested me to stay in the financial services industry is really understanding the work that financial advisors do day to day. So I really kind of come to not only be in their shoes, but found myself helping them along the way um, as they are working through the process with their clients to help kind of figure out how can they better serve their clients, you know, with solutions to um, more financial security, to financial wellness, to all of the solutions that clients are looking for um, in a financial advisor. Um, And disability insurance is certainly part of that. But, you know, I stayed in the insurance industry um, and I chose to continue to work with financial advisors, specifically uh, CFP, Certified Financial Planners, and Fee-Only Advisors. Um, I like to call them fiduciaries instead um, because they just have the same core values that I do when it comes to serving our working Americans, um, regardless of the income class. And so, that's really kind of where I fell in love with this industry um, because of the work that a lot of financial advisors do with insurance advisors in collaboration with them. Um, and also just working with companies, helping employees out, really being in all facets of the, the business um, with the financial advisor to help not just the one client of theirs, but their extended family members with their, uh, with their goals on when it comes to finances or work and life balance. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, having, you know, really with my entrepreneurial background, being a part of the financial advisor in their work and life um, to add the disability insurance um, really became something that was valuable. Um, but what was more important to me on top of that was uh, providing value outside of that, too, um, and really kind of using my, my head um, and, my, and my brains to what else can I provide to financial advisors on their day-to-day operations that would provide immediate um, relief to, okay. to what they're going through. So um, yeah, I, I felt really connected with financial advisors really in, in everything that they do day to day. And so um, that's really why I ended up staying in this industry and how I, I came to really have a passion for serving financial advisors. Yeah. You know, and we were just doing a webinar the other day, you and I, we talked about connection a lot and even in your bio, you know, it's so super important for you to connect with people 
Um, and so I, I love that, you know, you feel that in this industry, because I do believe that this industry, one of the greatest strengths of it is the connection. Like we love being together. We love to connect with our clients in, you know, in financial planning, uh, because it's so, it's very personal. And I was joking with some the other day, you know, we we're talking about therapy and we we're talking about financial planning, kind of some differences. And, and we we're joking, like, you know, as a financial planner, you want to be noticed at the grocery store. You want to go to their family functions. But as a therapist, it's like, oh no, they're, they're at the grocery store. I'm going to the other direction. You know, it's like, I'm out, you know, but there's a high level of connection in both of those interactions where financial planning really continues past the professional, a lot of times into that, that personal connection. So that's really fascinating that, that, that uh, you found the industry, you like it, and, and it's because of that connection really that you're here. So let me talk to you, Katja, because you brought this up. You know, we know we're going to talk about balance, but what is your definition of balance? For me, it starts with two things. Uh, the question has always been for me growing up, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so I know, I know that's an unfair question, even as an adult, because we're continuously changing and modifying our, ourselves to become a better version day by day, um, whether it's for work or private life um, and for whatever activities we're involved in. So the balance that works for me is, you know, I got to make sure that I'm staying on top of my vision and working towards my mission to get to my vision and, and keep that crystal clear. So um, as long as I have, you know, the activities that are aligning with my vision, which is to help other professionals when it comes to becoming an influencer, whether it's on LinkedIn or other social platforms. But really, you know, I don't think in today's digital world, you can thrive as a business um, without having someone in the business as an influencer um, to help connect the dots with relationship building. So um, for me, achieving balance is every day making sure I'm touching on my vision on that. Um, and then what are the activities I'm doing uh, as a part of my mission to get there, whether it's helping financial advisors solve disability insurance issues or or finding another avenue to bring value, such as inviting you to a webinar to my um my targeted uh, audience of financial professionals. So for me, achieving balance is every day I've got my priorities. Do they align with my mission? And am I knocking them off? Um, you know, and this knocking them off is really not necessarily completing by deadline. Um, I have a really high focus on the start date, much more so than the due date when it comes to task or projects. Um, and so the balance you know, when, when I hear the word, you know, what, what does balance mean for me? Um, you know, how does it work for me? It's definitely the ability to disconnect for work, disconnect for life, disconnect from work. Um, you know, being able to really shuffle that quickly, um, but really stay on top of my personal work and life mission and seeing if that is kind of treading towards the vision that I've, you know, created for myself. Um, so that's the balance. So really, it's got nice. nothing to do with um, work duties, sure. um, but more so knowing myself and, and really allocating my time appropriately, um, because every day it's always changing for me. Um, yeah. And so the balance is just making sure that I am on task. Um, Good. Yeah. Vision. Super important, right? To be on task, uh, have your priorities aligned with your mission. You know, I think that's the thing that stood out to me the most is like, yeah, your priorities are aligned. And, you know, we talk a lot about this in Achieving Balance in the very first section about what are your priorities? Are they aligned with your values? Um, because that's really at the, the core what I found most people have said in some roundabout way, um, if not directly, that they feel balanced when they're living their highest priorities, like what, what you just kind of mentioned. Now, as a working mom... And someone, you know, who's, who's juggling a lot of, you know, various roles professionally, uh, you know, let's talk about this uh, because I know this is a struggle and people will often ask, you know, in the financial planning industry, it's like 80% male, 20% female. Uh, it's just typical, right. Of, of the industry. And I, and I've been on a lot of other shows of great female financial advisors and those who have great networks are trying to improve that. But as a working mom, 
how, you know, what's one of the biggest struggles that you have? Um, because you're trying to live this balance, both in your work, you know, and, and personal life. But what do you think are some of the biggest issues that get you derailed from keeping those priorities high? I think kind of back to that question, you know, just really knowing what are my duties in life and, and, you know, at home and at the workplace. So, you know, I am a working mother. I am also the only breadwinner in my family supporting three men, two boys who are three and seven year old, and then my husband who is a stay at home dad. Um, So really, I don't see it as issues or challenges. I think um, really the issue, um, you know, where when I when I hear working mom, you know, maybe I have a different interpretation of that. That to me is, you know, mothers have always been working, whether they get paid or not. Um, and so uh, I think, you know, to what you mentioned earlier, this industry is, is very, you know, male dominated. And, you know, the, the good news is we're seeing more female uh, taking more leadership roles now. Um, I think I just saw a recent post on LinkedIn, Abacus Wealth Partners. Um, they just recruited two women to become uh, co-CEOs of their organization. So that was really interesting to see. Um, But for me, um, you know, really back to the priorities, um, time management, knowing my job duties, my work duties, my life duties, um, and really just keeping keeping myself accountable um, for the activities that should be lining up with all that I have to do. Um, So I am, you know, crystal clear on what I'm accountable for. Um, and it's, you no, know, it's more than definitely bringing in the dough. Um, it's, I'm also accountable for people at Secure Consultants, my team, making sure that they're afloat and in the boat and, and that uh, sinking and swimming with me. Uh, so to me, the working mom is, is, is a definition that I think is, you know, probably needs to be, uh, maybe have a new phrase, but um, yeah, accountability, um, I think is the biggest issue that I see kind of across uh, the board for a lot of working mothers, not that they aren't responsible. I think that's different. Um, But for myself, I know that if I lose accountability um, for my family and at the workplace um, and to my financial advisor clients um, and to their clients, then that's when I'm going to be really out of balance. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. Um, Studying families, family dynamics, you know, some are two working, you know, mom and dad, uh, some, you know, are, are working and have no children. Some are, you know, single, uh, you know, uh, income earners, typically male, right. Especially a male dominated field, but here you are as a woman who's in this male dominated field and, you know, your husband is a stay at home dad. Good for him. He's helping to, you know, take care of the kids and, and you guys have this, you have this cohesion, right? It works. It works for you. It works for your family. Um, but I 100% agree. Moms are always working, <laughs> whether you're getting paid or not working for money or working to see that your family is, you know, having everything they need there in the home. Super, super important. And those, you know, moms that are listening, maybe the few and far between here that, you know, maybe aren't in the, in the working world, um, that uh, they need to understand when I've, I've done the research on this, uh, I'm not the researcher, but I've done a lot of research on, on, on women, um, who are, who are stay at home moms. And, you know, they're the, the price of a stay at home mom to do everything that they do. Right. Or a stay at home dad, you know, if your husband's listening to this cat, um, the price of a stay at home dad, the value obviously is it's invaluable, right? We can't necessarily monetize it, but the tasks and the things that they do driving kids, you know, being the nurse, being everything to everyone, um, you know, it does have a value that I've seen typically between 90 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, which is interesting because we're going to talk about disability insurance, but talk about that in a life insurance scenario where I think a lot of advisors here um, know the struggle when they're doing a life insurance evaluation for for the maybe maybe it is a male breadwinner, you know, a single income earner family um, where the where the wife, the spouse is feeling like, well, I'm not worth much for life insurance. I just need it, you know, a few hundred thousand or whatever. They don't see that value of what they provide to the family. So wh- whether it's the husband at home, the wife at home, um, I think it's super important that the balance that you were talking about is like, what are my duties? Am I clear in what I need to do? And, um, you know, how can I 
stay in this balance? How, you know, how can I keep going? And that's, that's what I'm hearing from you, Kat. So I, I appreciate you sharing this. And it brings to life that maybe I need to have someone on the show <laughs> to talk about the value of uh, you know, stay-at-home moms or dads and you know, how, that, how that affects. But I, I can guarantee you, you probably have a rebuttal on this on the disability insur- uh, insurance side. We can talk to in just a minute. So I'm going to put a note on this. But let's go to advisors. And let's, let's ask about the, you know, the advisor realm here. And you've worked with hundreds, thousands of advisors. You've rubbed shoulders with them. You're an influencer uh, to this group. What do you typically see, uh, you know, the one, two, maybe top three issues that other advisors struggle when it comes to achieving balance? This is kind of a self-exploration or if you will, uh, self-reflection answer that I will give you, Travis, is I was wrong uh, (laughs) when I was trying to help financial advisors because I didn't, I think I saw the issues, but I didn't get it. So what happened was as I was helping them and because everybody has been so negatively impacted by the pandemic and we still are, Um, you know, the issues that I thought financial advisors had, I thought they were my issues, but they clearly were not. Um, So it really wasn't about disability insurance, um, which I think when I realized that, you know, that that was just an answer or a solution to one of their clients who may not even have that problem because they don't have enough education about it. I, I pivoted my approach And I went on a journey and I did a thousand hours of pro bono work to build relationships and just listen to these financial advisors to kind of figure out what are their issues? What are their pain points? Because it's clearly not mine, unless we're exactly the same person. And they're also stay at home moms and they married a husband like mine (laughs) and they grew up poor. But clearly everybody comes from a different background with different experience and expertise. And most financial advisors have different um, processes. They use different tools even. Um, But it was very clear that everybody shares day-to-day operational issues, whether um, the financial advisor is giving advice on uh, investments or college planning or for whatever topic they're giving advice to their clients. It was very clear to me that it wasn't about the products and solutions. And so as I befriended them and I dated them online and I got to know their content, um, I started to realize that their issues was more about their business, just like mine. Um, and their business also had to do with finances and better time management and being more productive and being a better marketer and being a better expressive writer. And somebody help, help me <laughs> is what I'm hearing from them, but they couldn't put those words out. So I ended up, uh, giving my time to say, here's how I would do email management if I were you, because I have 10,000 emails in my inbox, in one mailbox, but it's not necessary for you to pay attention to every single email. And it's not necessary for you to follow the zero zero out rule where you empty your inbox every day, Uh, because I'm kind of trying to use my experience as an executive assistant when I was back in the days. um, And I really apply a lot of what I've learned to help them with very little or, you know, any big issues they had, um, what's kind of stopping them from being successful was kind of what I figured out. So it was definitely just, I need training, I need coaching, um, I need to save time to be with my family, how can you help me with that? It was less more of, I want to make more money. (laughs) Um, It was more of, I I need to be with my kids, I'm going to miss soccer, or are you a mom? I'm a mom. Let's have a mom talk. And then we can always loop in the business later. So the issues that I saw were very human issues, um, which also relates to business as well. Um, But I did, I pulled out all the tricks and strategies and tips I had in my five foot frame and in my little brain (laughs) to help them figure out what's bothering you today, whether it's disability insurance or you can't prospect or someone's not reaching you and you've already sent out three emails, and this person has ghosted you, I'll write you a message. Use my message, and this is what you should say the next time you reply back. So I'll, like, I will actually interrupt their process and see what I can do to add value. So I think, you know, to answer your question, Travis, 
I had to put myself in their shoes, not only imagine, but really ask to be a part of, of their role and, and understand what are the day-to-day issues you're having? What are your goals? Or what have you been tasked with? What are you struggling with that you're not reaching, you know, the next status of your, uh, where you're at in your job? You know, what do you want to accomplish? And how, how, how can I help you make a million? How can I help you write your book? I know a guy, I know a girl. <laughs> I mean, I know people, like, what is it that you need help with? I mean, we don't need to talk about me, but it was just really me trying to figure out and hear from them what are their issues instead of me assuming. Love that. You, don't we learn a lot by interviewing people and really trying to understand? I mean, a thousand pro bono hours. I feel like that's what this project has been with the Balance Advisor podcast. I've literally interviewed you know, almost a hundred um, potential candidates for this. And we were booked out for about four or five months for, for just to get the po- uh, podcast out. Um, the very first, you know, as we, we launched this, we had uh, four or five or six uh, um, episodes in a couple of weeks to kind of really throw a lot of content into the mix. But since then, you know, it's been, it's been, you know, every Thursday dropping this content out. And I've just been thinking about, as you're saying, like doing some of this interview, I, that's why I love doing this podcast. I love interviewing and find out what really is balance. How are you struggling with this, with your specific situation? What do you see that other advisors uh, that maybe I've not been able to see as we've interviewed hundreds of advisors for the book? Uh, so I love that. I love that you're doing that. I love that you're really um, finding a lot of the same things that I'm finding that is they're very human issues, right? <laughs> That's what you're saying. Like, these are very human issues. Okay. You're a mom too. How are you struggling? What, how can I relate to you? Uh, but they're also that you, you rely on something that I I've seen lately. I've seen patterns of this show up in my life. And that is when times are tough, people fall back on their training. You typically don't rise to something more than you've been trained on. Um, I read a fantastic book that really drove this home and highly recommend it to everybody. It's a bestseller book out there called uh, Make Your Bed. <laughs> and, you know, Navy SEAL uh, that, that just really brings in these concepts of doing some basic things every day that will change your life. And now every day when I wake up, I'm like, oh, I need to make my bed, right? It's just those one thing, but that has everything to do with all these other concepts. And one thing is, you know, we rely on our training. That's why SEALs are so highly trained and they train and they train and they train so that when they're in those situations, they're ready to go. So speaking of training as an executive assistant, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, go here for a second. I'm going to pick your brain. And I, I think, you know, you, you don't give yourself enough uh, credence on this, regardless of height. Um, I, I do think that your experience there is incredible because most advisors, they really struggle to hire an assistant. They struggle to delegate in general. Like we talk about delegation all the time on the show. So as someone with this wonderful training, what do you think advisors, or excuse me, let me frame this a different way. Why do you think advisors struggle to make that move and hire an executive assistant? I think it's kind of a two answer response to that. I think the advisor himself or herself still needs to figure out who they wanna be when they grow up. So they still need to work on their issues uh, before they can even find what kind of help they need. Um, So I see a lot of this where even on like LinkedIn, people are kind of shoving information, you know, down other people's throats on various products and solutions. But um, I don't know how meaningful, and I don't think it's that meaningful to to get the 300 views or 500 views, um, no matter how beautiful the content is. So I think, you know, advisors really need to kind of have a very clear or work on putting together a very clear vision of who do they want to be? What's their purpose and, and work and life? Um, because until you, until you figure that out, it doesn't matter if you get paid half a million or it doesn't matter if you're an influencer or you know, you're a re- responsible parent. You're going to come back to ground zero, ground one or whatever ground. Um, you won't be making progressive steps towards the direction of happiness and fulfillment and success. So I think um, as an advisor to advisors, and um, I, I see that, I see that a lot of financial advisors are there to do the job, um, 
but they're still wondering and trying to create an image of themselves. Um, and that's all still very blurry. So, you know, definitely figuring out what your vision in life is. And, and then the mission will come easy because the mission, you can have an executive assistant to help you with those assignments. You can have um, an outside coach to help you. You can have, um, you know, you can hire a, an, another expert to do the, the work outside of the country for less cost. So really, I think the vision, you know, having your personal vision defined, um, even if you're a part of a big corporate world, right, and you're just one out of 10,000 employees, it's still very important for you to have that vision written down um, and, and have a clear picture of that and follow that, um, and then everything will come along. So um, if you have that, then you'll know that my goal is I'm going to be an influencer. My goal is to sell and make a million dollars this year. And then from there, you can figure out, I need an executive assistant who has sales skills, who has marketing skills, who's, who's awesome in digital technology, um, who is going to keep me on task and not just be the gatekeeper, but who can think like me and act like me virtually and in person, just like Pepper Potts from Iron Man. Um, that was always my dream when I was very little reading the comic books. It's just like, oh, I want to be like her because people are giving Iron Man so much credit, but she's the, the brains behind the success of the business, Iron Man is just out there trying to save the world and he was trying to discover and find himself. <laughs> right. I mean, I love him too, but still the focus wasn't, you know, was on him because he had a story of, you know, moving past that, you know, he had to progress. So the story had to be about him and that Pepper Potts who already knew who she was. Um, so that's kind of how I envision it where, you know, it doesn't matter your role, you do have to, you know, go through the Iron Man phase um, and then you can find a pepper pot to help you. If you're lucky, the, your pepper pot will already be there. And she can also help you with your um, self-reflection and, and help you identify your vision uh, and help you with that. So I think that's just, you know, it, it keeps on coming back to me, Travis. People uh, really can't answer not knowing who they want to be with it when they grow up or they get confused with mixing that up with helping their clients on certain solutions or following, you know, their, their corporate um, world's vision, which is great as long as all those values align together, but you really do need your own. Um, and a lot of financial advisors are going independent. So everybody, even if you're not a financial advisor, you do need to work on your own vision um, before you can even uh, find the kind of success that you, you know, once you're on your deathbed, will say, wow, I really did try to live life with so much passion and purpose. Love it. Yeah. Well said, well said. Um, you know, it, it didn't ever occur to me that those who are struggling to find an executive assistant are, you know, might be confused with their own identity. I've studied human development and change for years. That's been my academic, um, you know, background. That's my strength. That's what I bring to this industry is really understanding human behavior and why we do things. And, you know, one of the, one of the greatest, um, I think theorists of human development is Eric Erickson. And he actually talks about this idea. And I, I do bring it up in my book. I bring that up as a theory in my book, but I don't talk about this stage of identity development um, as much as I would like to, because I've been talking about like the end of life, like looking backwards. But he says, you know, if you don't really come to grips with your identity when you're 16 to 18, maybe 19 years old, it kind of, you kind of struggle with it your whole life. It's like, you're kind of stuck at this developmental stage. And I think you're, I think you're onto something here, Kat. I think you're onto something knowing that what I know about the, you know, human developmental change, that if advisors really aren't okay with maybe their professional identity or even their personal identity, they may be stuck and not able to have, you know, someone help them because they're not sure where they're going, <laughs> right? And they're not sure in their development. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're balance. Wise. Exactly, 100%. So, um, you know, looking at it through this developmental lens, kind of going a little bit deep in the psychology of this, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, it might not make sense to everybody out there um, who doesn't, you know, understand Eric Erickson, but really read the book, go to Eric, you know, look up Eric Erickson and look at his stages of change. And really at the center is identity. 
And if you don't progress past it, I mean, I've seen studies where those who aren't able to really be in tune with who they are, their identity, they struggle with relationships almost the rest of their life. And so this makes sense. This is a professional relationship that is, you know, a right hand man or left, you know, a right hand gal, like whoever that is for you as an executive assistant. It's an extension. It's a Batman and Robin situation, right? So if you don't, if you're not, you know, great with being Batman, you know, Robin might not work out for you. So what a what a great comment. I appreciate you going there with me on this one and makes a ton of sense. My I just have one question. It's super important that we address this. Okay, Kat. And that is. Have you ever dressed up as Pepper Potts for Halloween? <laughs> I actually was going to this year because my kids oh, yeah. are old enough and they watched Iron Man a couple of times, yeah. but we watched Squid Game oh, um, okay. and I wanted, wanted to teach them about money lessons from Squid Games. So we ended yeah. up doing a Squid Game family theme instead. But next year. <laughs> yeah, that was my first time. I was like, I guarantee you she's probably dressed up, but that's been your, your ideal. That's too fun. Well, um, I, I appreciate you answering these questions and, and really helping us understand what you've been able to see through your experience. Um, I always like to you know, leave some time at the end to talk about how you help advisors to be more balanced with what you do with Secura. Yes. So I think from the hundreds of conversations and the 1,000, I'll just pick on the t- past two years of 1,000 hours of pro bono work, really building close relationships with financial advisors, regardless of their pay structure. Um, I've kind of seen that a lot of financial advisors are still either in two buckets. They're still approaching their clients or market um, using traditional techniques. And then you have the ones that are in the middle that are like, I don't know if I want to go modern social selling or if I want to go a traditional. And then you have people like yourself, Travis, um, and other financial advisors who are, they're nailing it because you know that nowadays, you know, part of balance, especially if you're a financial advisor, is you cannot avoid the social scene. Um, You must become an influencer to, to have long lasting, meaningful relationships um, whether at work or outside of the house. I mean, you must treat yourself like a celebrity and be a responsible um, person, have a good character. Um, and I think that's part of the balance that a lot of financial advisors are are still trying to, to work on. Um, because without that, um, you can probably make a sale, but you won't be able to hold a relationship for the long term. Um, and without um, having influence, you will be chasing your customers and prospects the old fashioned way of biweekly emails, monthly calls, um, just to drop your voice on their, you know, already maxed out mailbox. Um, And so, you know, I think the part of the balance for financial advisors that I've seen is really the struggle of why do I need to become an influencer? Should I become an influencer? How is that gonna help me balance my career? Um, and that, and how is that even going to help me balance my identity? Because we talked about that, or my, or my um, identity at home. And so, um, I think, you know, if you're a financial advisor and you're giving advice, and you know, you're going to be having to deal with a lot of millennials because baby boomers are dying out. They're 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 retiring. They're going somewhere else. <laughs> they're still working, maybe working for just passion and not money. Um, but you're going to be having to have to embrace millennials and millennials are thinkers because I'm one. Um, and so we came into influencers um, and we appreciate people who can influence um, other people. And that's what's going to get us to take financial advisors advice seriously and um, apply it as a habit and also go back and build a more meaningful relationship with financial advice by saying, well, you know, I was just thinking, I know you mentioned disability insurance, and I was just thinking, I, I did realize that, wow, if I don't have enough disability insurance, it could really impact my whole family's future. Uh, because I really, like, I can't save. I mean, I could only save three months, and but I really need to focus on disability insurance or whatever the product may be. I mean, you're also, you know, at, as financial advisors become influencers, you're also influencing your clients to think more too. And they're also trying to extract more value out of financial advisors, which requires financial advisors to seek outside resources and to be more educated, um, to be more empathetic, more sympathetic, to have a higher EQ, all of that. So 
Um, you know, the balance that I like see on LinkedIn every day as financial advisors, just hitting the pause and what should they do with um, building relationships virtually with their clients? Um, how, do, how can they make that a part of balance? Um, you can use traditional techniques, um, emails and all of that. But uh, for, for what I see financial advisors, you know, making and embracing, becoming an influencer, if you're not, then someone at your firm should be. So that that can also help bring balance to you in your professional career um, with whatever that you are uh, trying to do um, beyond giving financial advice. So, yeah, wow. so I think clearly um, you can't get away from becoming an influencer. Yeah, no, being an influencer in these days, especially with changing market, changing dynamics, um, is super important to be able to, you know, have that that face. Because if you don't, people are going to Google you. They're going to look. <laughs> they're going to they're going to search you out first. Um, and they're going to see you know who you are if they want to do business with you. Because we know that people do business with those who they know, like, and trust. And so, if it's first time they've ever seen you, they're probably going to do some work on you know homework on it and trying to find out who this person is. But I also love that you mentioned, you know, advisors need to get used to outsourcing. And if they outsource, you know, if it, whether it's disability, um, you know, life insurance, even I've had others on here that, that do a great job um, outsourcing the life insurance part for advisors. So with Secura, do you guys do disability for the advisors or do you help them to broker the disability? We do both. So we okay. will do disability reviews for for any financial professional um, advisors and their clients, including employers um, and all of the employees. So uh, we'll do the group as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think what differentiates Secura consultants from a lot of disability brokers out there is uh, we we purged away with the quick quotes um, and we've embraced a lot of what the fiduciary advisors um, have embraced. And so our mission now is to only work and build relationships with financial advisors who share these values um, and also continue to, to develop uh, ideas to help them and also other areas if we can, which is why we do webinars that are <laughs> maybe not product focused. And we've invited you, Travis, to come and speak on balance. And so yeah. people are wondering what's going on? <laughs> why are you breaking the trend with these webinars? I mean, why, why a time management topic? Why a balance topic? And so we really, I think, um, help, helping financial advisors, you need to go beyond the core products that you offer. Um, and that's also by collaborating with other people like yourself, Travis, and um, other organizations to provide additional value. All right. Well, thank you for the time you spent here today. You know, um, what I love about Kat is that, you know, you're genuine. You say you want to connect with people and you do it <laughs> and you reach out and you're a resource and you're, you know, if somebody wants an honest, ethical, you know, advice, uh, I, I highly recommend, you know, talking with Kat to see if she can help you with your own disability or, you know, with your clients, if you want to outsource that. Um, how do they get a hold of you, Kat? Where, where should they go to, um, you know, go deeper with you? Uh, they can visit me on my website, katiajean.com, or they can connect with me on LinkedIn. Love it. Yeah, we'll have the show notes. Please connect on LinkedIn. Is it, I mean, you're you're there all the time. You are an influencer on that platform, and it's great to, to rub shoulders with you here uh, virtually through our YouTube channel, through those who are loyal listeners of the show. Um, so thank you for spending some time with us today, Kat. Thank you for having me, Travis. Yes. And thank you, loyal listeners to the Balanced Advisor podcast. Please like, share, love, comment, rave about this, um, or send me comments if you really you know, feel like you totally disagree with some of the things we've been talking about today. I'd love to have you on the show um, or others who are out there who um, um, rub shoulders with this with amazing financial advisors here in this community. So thank you again for everybody for listening. Thanks, Kat. And to... Uh, um, to end this up again, if you haven't gotten the Achieving Balance book, um, this is going to be you know a little bit later, but a new a new cover is probably on my website now because we just updated that. The audiobook is ready to roar, so you can catch that at AchievingBalanceBook.com. But um, thank you everyone for for being here on the show, and again, remember to live life on purpose. <laughs>